Hello, my name is Joanne. I am American born Chinese. We adopted our oldest girl, Alana. She goes by Nala. She's 16 years old and she is from Zhanjiang, China. Our second daughter is Elise. She is our biological child. And our third child is our son Tristan. He is from Chengdu, China. We adopted him as well. So we flew into Beijing. We had the first week to get oriented, um, sightseeing and that kind of thing. Then one night they said, okay, you're going to Hunan province is where Max is from. So we flew to Hunan province to Shangdu. to have kids for a few years and were unsuccessful so we decided to adopt. Once we decided to adopt it was a natural choice to go to China. We're both um, American-born Chinese. It seemed natural to go to China because that's our country of origin and we also heard there were a lot of healthy um, Chinese baby girls to adopt. These are some of the documents that I needed to put together to go adopt um, Alana from China. We had to do a home study, which is basically with a social worker, so she had to write a report, adoption report for us. We had to fill out all these forms. One of the things that was very important for me to show you was the um, pictures that I first got when I we first got our referral. It's just a tiny picture, but she's so cute and so adorable. At that time, we knew she was ours once we got the picture and came home from the agency. We put it up on the refrigerator so we could look at it every night until we were ready to travel to, chi to China. So we knew, again, that she was ours and meant to be ours. So the long-awaited day has come. Here I am, the nervous mom-to-be on the bus ride to the orphanage. And before we know it, we're on the grounds touring the orphanage. And we go to the conference room to get some paperwork done. And once the paperwork is out of the way, then here come the babies. So here they are. They walk the babies out one by one. And one by one, they call the name of the baby and they put the baby in each of our arms. And here's my first um, moment with her, holding her, with the nanny giving her to me. This is me with Alana. And this is the nanny who handed her to us. Words and pictures just cannot describe the feelings that we had inside. My name is Molly Minervino. My husband and I, in 1997 or so, decided that we wanted to start our family. And then I also was talking to my friends who have children that they adopted from America. And of course their children have the opportunity to locate their biological mothers if they choose, or fathers. I don't know, my husband and I weighed the pros and cons of the ease of finding the biological parents. We were wondering if it was, if you couldn't, find your parents because it wasn't legally feasible or it just wasn't able to be happened, would that make it easier on a person psychologically because they know they couldn't, so it's not like it's something that you even have to think about versus I know I could, so maybe I want to. 
10 o'clock that evening, there was a knock on the door and they opened the door and this beautiful 14 month old little girl was looking at me like, who in the heck are you? Hi daddy. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, she was so beautiful, you know, because she just changed so much from this little six month old picture to this blossoming, beautiful, you know, inquisitive child. My name is Max Minervino. I was adopted at 18 months from the Hanyu province in China. My parents never hid the adoption thing from us. They were pretty, like, we were always raised to know that we were adopted and that we had Chinese culture. Like, our parents used to give us, like, interactive Chinese things or read us Chinese books in English because they always wanted us to retain our culture and history, but we just never really took to it. Well, I mean, I never took to it. I don't know about my sister. Hi, I'm Katie Miravino. I was born in Zhangxi province in China. I was adopted in 2002. I was 18 months. My biological parents left a note explaining why, which is because they already had a child and the one child policy kind of like, I understand how the high person wants the one child policy to keep the population down, but people who do have like more than one child has to like get rid of it somehow, make the task to get rid of it, and I'll, I think they, people should have as many kids as they want. Hi, I'm Nala Wu. I am a junior in high school. Uh, I was adopted from China when I was eight months old. I never really felt weird. I mean, like, especially when I was younger, I was just like, I have a mom and a dad, and somewhere else I have a mom and a dad. Like, I, I, I don't know, I, <laughs> I didn't know, like, who they were, but, um, I mean, I didn't really care back then. First time I told her she was adopted was when she was very small. It was probably before she could understand it. The professionals in the adoption communities always say that it shouldn't be a big surprise when you're 10 years old to learn that you're adopted. You should always know it from the day you're, you're so very young. So I remember when she was a young baby, probably less than a year old, I started to tell her the story. And it goes something like this. Way back when you were a baby in China, um, you had a mother who loved you very much, but she couldn't take care of you. And because she couldn't take care of you, she had to give you up. She wanted you to have a better place to live, and that was the reason that she gave you up. And your mom and dad were so happy that this woman gave you up because all she did was she wanted a better life for you. And because she gave you up, mommy and daddy were so lucky to get you. We packed our bags and we flew on a very long journey to China to get you. And that's how you became part of our family, and that's how you became part of our forever family. I know it's really hard to find your birth parents and I think that when I was younger and now I still even think that if you don't know who they are, they can be whoever you want them to be. And if I went searching for my birth parents, I think that I definitely have questions answered because I mean like being adopted, it's sort of like rejection in a way because it's just like, oh, we don't want you. But then on the other side, like it's also seen as you're trying to give your kid the best life. And if, you're, and if the best life for your kid isn't with you, so you're willing to give up your kid. I mean, I don't know what the case was. And I don't know if I want to know. That's the thing, because like, it would be cool to like, meet them and just be like, hey, like, look where I am now. And like, I have grown a lot, <laughs> you know? But like, I don't know if I'd want to find them. But, like, I remember like a couple years back I would have said, yes, I do want to find them because I, I would always, it always, it's always a little thing in the back of my head where I just feel like, I wonder who they are and I wonder why they gave me up. So, yeah. She's had very um, thoughtful times and questions in her head about why she was abandoned and who she is and who her, who her parents are. When we took a trip to China last summer and we visited her hometown, we visited Donghai, she looked around and she looked at all the people there and she wondered which of these people could be my relative, my mother, my cousin, my uncle, my aunt. And so I'm sure she has these questions in her. 
there's a big like land bridge connecting the island and the mainland and i remember as we were like going over it like i was feeling sort of very anxious i guess or just like excited anxious like oh my god like i'm finally going back to where i came from and it was very surreal for me because i was just like i can't believe i'm from here like i'm looking around it's like a fishing village i'm like i'm from here as we crossed from the land bridge onto the island it started raining and i love rain i've always loved rain and it was really cool and it was really weird because like it was like, you know, just partly cloudy as we were driving over the bridge, but then once we got on the island, it just started pouring. And I was like, that's like, it was a weird coincidence. We drove to the, um, the school. I was abandoned at a, um, I found a middle school, and I recognized it right away. And I was like, oh my god, like, this is it. Like, this is it. And, and I just felt really weird. Like, I couldn't do anything. I wasn't really crying. I was just standing there, just staring at everything, taking it in. Like, this was my home. Everyone there, like, had really similar facial structure to me. And there's, like, a couple people in particular who really look like me, and that was really creepy for me, because I was like, like, any of these people could be related to me somehow. And, like, any of these people, like, what if I walked past my mom then? What if I walked past, like, my grandpa or my uncle or something? Like, like, what if? And that was, like, really weird. As I was walking around the fish market, I was, like, looking at everyone, and I was like, I wonder if my parents saw me if they would recognize me because i wouldn't recognize them because i have no clue what the heck they look like that's the one thing that i i think was difficult although it's nice that she had a foster family i think that's wonderful but the connection was so strong to her foster family when they took her away she was very distraught and who wouldn't be she was 18 months old and she'd been taken away from the only family she ever knew She would just scream, and she'd go up to the door and go, Mama I.E., Mama I.E., you know, and she would take all of her belongings and everything with her, and it was heartbreaking, you know, because, and then they wanted us to meet this foster family, and I really wanted to, and I was, oh, yes, but after six days of this, and knowing that this little girl was so, wanted her mom so badly to, actually have them come, have her see her again, and then take her away, I couldn't do it. So I didn't meet them. It was tough, it was really difficult, because even though Max was there and the two of them, you know, she would try to get her sister to play with, she'd give her a ball, or she'd give her, you know, a book, or, and she'd still cry, and Max would go up to me and go, Mom, make her stop, make her stop. And it's like, I'm sorry, I couldn't, and there's no way I could comfort her. You know, she just was so upset until we got on the plane and flew away. And I think she knew then that she wasn't going back and she had to get to like these people or she was going to be, you know. We wanted to have a third child and uh, we decided to adopt because we thought, well, we have one adopted child, we have one biological child. You know, should we try to have another child biologically or should we adopt? And we decided that if we can adopt, we're not only gaining a third child, which is what we want, but we're also helping one more child in China to be saved from the orphanage and not have him or her live in the orphanage. So. I remember when I parents told me that we were going to adopt a boy then I remembered and then I saw like a picture of him and he had like really big cheeks and he was kind of a little fat. <laughs> we stayed home and then my mom went with my grandma. They came back overnight I think and then I woke up and my mom and my brother were in the study which is like our guest room. I ran into the study and then the first thing I thought or maybe I said it was he looks exactly like I thought he would but then I didn't realize that I'd seen the picture of him before, so. He seems a bit more questioning or concerned about who his biological parents are, and he's just more connected to his biological family or his family in China. He was raised by a foster mother, so he has a tie to her. He's seen pictures of her and he visited her last summer. She was so happy to see him because she took care of him for a year in her home and then she sees him grown up. He's a 10 year old boy. I appreciate them because they took care of me for a long time 
They're very glad to see me again, hugging me all over. If I had met my biological parents, I would ask them about themselves because I would like to know more about them, but I know that they will never replace my mother, so. Oh no, biological parents are like just people who gave birth to me and that's pretty much it. Like, I know they're out there somewhere, but I feel no desire to go looking for them or who they are. My adopted parents are my parents. I tell myself as like Chinese because I was born there, you know, that's my origin. But I also do see myself as American because I grew up here with this culture, so. I'm Asian American, but I don't really think I'm Asian most of the time because I don't have an accent. I mean, I look Asian, but apart from that, I've been completely raised American, unfortunately from my parents' point of view, who like tried to introduce Asian culture to our family. But I just view myself as American more than Asian. If they ever want to take Mandarin, I'm more than happy to have them take Mandarin lessons. They don't want to, so I'm not going to force it upon them. So I don't want to alienate the, my children from me or from anything. I don't want them to feel like I'm pushing China on them all the time. They are Chinese. They'll always be Chinese. And I don't want them to grow up thinking, why do you want me to be something else than your daughter? You know, because they're my children. Do you feel lucky that I was brought here? Like I could have been adopted by anyone and ended up here and I think that's really cool. And I mean, I believe in fate and those kinds of things. So like, I mean, I was brought here for a reason. And I mean, coming here, I taught myself how to draw and I got support um, to do the things I really like to do. Like I do theater, I sing, I draw. I could, I could still be in China right now, like in that fishing village, probably fishing, <laughs> but um, like I'm here. I wanna set up like a fund or grant to orphanages in China because they don't, I feel like they don't get as much publicity as other situations such as in Africa like clothes and water, but in China you don't really hear much from them, so. I want to be like an artist, like an illustration artist for computer graphics and CGI, working on movies, stuff like that. So yeah, I was going to Mass Art for Saturday Studios and that's pretty much it. Just thank you, like for everything really. Thank you.